This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. All right, welcome back. Jonathan Clark in the studio with a, a fantastic artist who has sold millions of albums. She's won many awards, Brit Awards, Billboard Awards, Ivor Novello Awards, ASCAP Awards. I could go on. Uh, she's got a new album. It's called Deeper. And look at this thing. This is fantastic. Wow. Look at this. Fantastic. New album is Deeper, and she's playing the Highline Ballroom here in New York City, October 14th. She's about to start a worldwide tour, all the tour dates, and to buy tickets, lisa-stansfield.com. So, obviously, Lisa Stansfield is here. Hello. How are you? I'm good to you. Good to see you. And, okay, and I we mentioned this before we started. Full disclosure, I worked at Arista Records. No! Yes! I worked so with we're... Melanie Rogers. Oh, so I was talking about Melanie Rogers yesterday and Tony, Tony Anderson. Right. So did you know Tony as well? I sure did. And I believe that I set up interviews for you because I was working oh for Melanie. God. And, uh, you know, it's funny. It's almost like Arista Reunion Week. You know what was in here yesterday? <laughs> Tom Bailey from the Thompson Twins. Oh, my God. Yeah, because that was before me. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he had a couple albums out on Arista then, too. So it's nice to be God. reunited yeah, with you. Yeah, very nice. Um, well, how are you doing? And I'm doing good. <laughs> um, this, uh, I, I think we had a day of interviews, as I recall. We were in the Paramount Hotel right. in Midtown. And we had you in a room, and you were doing a million television yeah. interviews or something like that. My um, head was sort of falling off on one side. Yeah, and you know what's amazing about that time? Because I think I think Clive had played us your record or or the first single that was like really sort of right. you know making some noise over in the UK, and yeah. then he played it for us. And everyone was like, right away, they're like, "Who is this? Who right. is this artist?" And uh, and then we met you uh, with this <laughs> this lovely person. Uh, who has this amazing northern accent mm. singing like I don't know Dion like Anita Baker? Well, it was you know it was really weird when when I first came over here yeah? because um, I mean everybody sees a, a million trillion pictures of artists before they even listen to the music now, you know, and uh, nobody knew what I looked like. Yeah. And I came over here, I'm like a little skinny white girl, and everybody expected me to look like Aretha Franklin. Right, yeah. You know, and I walked into like um, urban radio stations, and, and they'd look at me and they'd say, oh, is Lisa here? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, no, it's me. I'm, I'm not the assistant. Right. Um, yeah, so it took a while for people to And it to seemed, get used I mean, to, to me at the time, sort of like, you know, working for the record company that was promoting you, it seemed like that how that album, Affection, really took off right away. Yeah. It happened really, really quickly, right? I mean, in a matter of months, your single was just on the top. Yeah, I mean, it, it, everyone sort of thinks it's, it's a whirlwind thing, a yeah. whirlwind thing, but it really is. I mean, you can spend 20 years of your life working yourself up and you it. were working before that i mean let's not forget yeah. about that either i mean and the and every i mean you see all these like people in the chat on the chart and and in the public eye and you all assume that they're like wow overnight successes and they've worked really really hard but when it hits it you do not you are not prepared for it yeah you can spend like 15 10 15 years preparing yourself you are never prepared yeah. Because it's always unexpected, everything unexpected. It's like, right, yeah, it's like you might work for, you know, five or seven years before, but when that, it's like the match to the gasoline, and mm. then it just takes off right there. And everything has to be done all at the same time. Right. In every single place in the world. And you can do it now quite easily, but then you just had to travel everywhere. Right. And, um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty, um, Pretty and it weird. got to the point, I think, where you literally could not leave your house because people recognized you and you, you know, you had to kind of be careful, right? I mean. Yeah. I mean, in my hometown, it was like that. Yeah. I yeah. had a few weird, right. weird and wonderful You actually people. moved to Ireland, I think, too? Yeah. For a while. Yeah. That, that was um, on the third album. We did the third album there. Yeah. And we just fell in love with it. And and at that time, it was, it was getting too much. It, I, I couldn't sort of go out and get 
get a bottle of milk and a loaf of bread. Yeah, well, that's you know, nobody and, watched that. And, um, so, yeah, it was lovely. We, we moved to Ireland and then we sort of stayed there for 14 years. Why not? Had yeah. Quite a strange life. Yeah. It, it sounds kind of peaceful, though. Yeah, it Maybe was, good for you creatively. A bit too peaceful, though, yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with all that fame, it allows you to meet and perhaps even work with some incredible people. As you look yeah. at, that, at that whirlwind time, is there one thing you always think of where you say, I can't believe I met that person or I'm working with that person or I met that rock and roll idol? What, what's like the couple things that come to mind God, immediately? a lot of people. I mean, when you, th- you think about, like, I, I, I met Prince quite a few times. I would sat down and chatted with him. And, you know, George Michael, I knew George Michael. Um, I got, you know, and I mean, Dionne Warwick, but I mean, she's still here. Thank God, but um, you worked with Dion. Yeah, and she came to somebody at, can't, can't, Somebody asked; they wanted to know about working with Dion Warwick. She somebody was asked. the most gracious, wonderful woman, and um, it was like I, re- I just wanted to call her Auntie Dion. Yeah, because I was a lot younger then. She was probably about a bit younger than I am now. Right, and um, she was just so gorgeous and she walked in the studio she traveled like from la to rochdale which is very different and um yeah a little bit I'd be, yeah i come from a normal little town in england and she came to my town to my studio and it was just such an honor for us right of course know? yeah and she was amazing she was absolutely well she i think she isn't she from jersey anything. originally like right across the oh, river right, in new jersey right. yeah uh, Lisa Stansfield is with us. The new album is Deeper. Everyone should go out and buy this. It's the uh, eighth studio album, and she's playing the Highline Ballroom here in New York City October 14th, about to kick off a worldwide tour, all the tour dates, uh, and to buy tickets, lisa-stansfield.com. It's amazing with somebody like you with a catalog now of eight albums. Mm. Um, when, you, when you reach that level of success, your songs... Um, and I was actually talking about Tom, talking to Tom about this uh, yesterday with the Thompson Twins. Mm. Those songs mean a lot to people, but different sort of things happens. It almost becomes part of their formative years. They they might have been seventeen, yeah. you know, when they heard your songs or whatever. And then still to this day, people come up to you and say, "That song saved my life," or yeah, it's "That song saved my marriage," or something. Right? It's, yeah, the, there is a beautiful story actually. That I would, I was in a, um, the local pub one night in Ireland, where we lived in Ireland, and um, there was a guy at the bar, and you know we used to go in there all the time. We knew everyone, and this guy was a stranger, and he, he was at the bar, and and the bar guy walked over to me and my husband, and um, with the with drinks, and he said, "Oh, that guy's bought you a drink." And I said, oh, do you know, what, did he say who he was or why? And he said, no, he just said to buy you a drink. And, you know, there's no strings attached, whatever. And so, like, I went over to him eventually because he did look a bit scary, actually. So I was a bit scared <laughs> of him. But um, I went over eventually and I just thanked him for the drink. And I said, you know, why did you buy me a drink? I, I said, I know I'm famous and you might have done it for that, but is there a reason? And he said, yeah, because you saved my marriage. Wow. And um, he said, me and my wife <clears throat> were going to split up. That, you know, we woke up one morning, we decided, you know, we'd go to work that day and then we'd re- like reconvene and, and work things Do out. Do the deed, and, yeah. And we'd like see how it goes. And, and he said, in that day... He heard all woman on the radio, oh. and um, he started to cry. Yeah, he was sitting in his car, I think, and he w- and he went to the record shop. He bought the record, and that that evening, his wife came on from work, and he was waiting for her. And he said, "Come and sit down and listen to this song." And they sat and listened. It always makes me cry when I tell this. Story. I, that's such an amazing um, and story. And they sat together and they cried. And they realized that they'd been really silly and they've still had something really beautiful. And so, yeah, they're still married. Oh, that's so great. And it's always <laughs> like, you know what? It's like, the yeah, and, you know, who knows why people stay together or break up. But usually it's like a stupid thing. 
You yeah, know, it's usually. like a little stupid ag- disagreement well, over I think, something, but, you know? that's what that song's all about. It's that you lose sight of why you got together in the first place. Right. It all becomes very functional. Yeah. You know, a marriage and it and it shouldn't be a job. It should be it shouldn't be a chore. It should be a pleasure, shouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um British soul, British R and B or dance. Uh this started with your mom playing the records. Yeah, as Diana a little kid. Ross, yeah. Diana Ross, okay. So I've never met Diana Ross, but I feel like I've met her because I've sung with her so many times. Oh, in front, <laughs> yeah, with exactly. Hairbrush. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- that was the first stuff that I really, really put that my ears pricked up to. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Marvin Gaye, a lot of Motown and right. Barry White. And my mum and dad used to have amazing parties. Really? Just like the real 70s parties. I mean, I suppose it was different in America, but we do, you'd have like volivants and all these like little party foods and everyone would get really dressed oh, up. Oh, that's great. They'd all wear like evening dresses and they were just in a little house somewhere. Um, but we were just so enamoured with the with me and my sister. We'd watch everyone from the stairs and oh, what they drinking, what they eating, yeah. what they listening to, and that music was the soundtrack for that. And so yeah, it it, it really shaped a lot of what what I am. That I way. saw something that you said about your mom. She actually met Prince. She did meet Prince. <laughs> yeah. You got to tell that story. Right. Well, the, it, it's a sort of. Um, a series of, of events, really. Two events. So one, we were we were doing this thing called Rock in Rio in Brazil. Oh yeah, in yeah. Rio. So Prince was doing it, I was doing it, and there was just one club where everyone went in Rio afterwards or whatever. Yeah, or, and yeah. everyone would go there in the evening, and so everyone's going. Prince, Prince has arrived today. Prince has arrived today. And everyone's looking out for Prince. And then we, everybody goes to this club. And there's like a little mezzanine thing. And he does like, well, he did, sorry. He, he did like a bit of a mezzanine VIP area just for Prince. And um, and I just always used to think, oh, it's a bit wanky really, isn't it? And so Yeah, it's a little bit much, right? It's I'm like, get, yeah. I'm, I get this guy come over and like, I'm sitting with him, my husband. And um. And this guy comes over and he said, oh, Prince has arrived, he's, he's up on the mezzanine and he would really like to meet you. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to. Pick no. jaw Because off I'm floor. obviously just like <clears throat> really frightened, like, oh my God, I can't, I can't meet Prince, what am I going to do? And I, and I said, oh, no, no, I, no, I'm all right. I'll just stay here. And Ian went, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> he said, go and meet him. He said, you'll never get another opportunity to meet him. He said, go and meet him. Don't be so shy. And so I went up, and obviously I'm still really in a state about everything. And he keeps talking to me. And, um, and he kept sort of flirting with me. And I thought it was quite inappropriate. Right. And... um. And because I was really nervous, I got really flustered and I slapped him across the face. Come on! And um, after I'd slapped him, it was like there was a balcony about this high, like just a sort of balustrade onto the dance floor, and he, he jumped up onto the balcony, the balustrade, and he looked back at me, well, after I'd slapped his face, and he just said, I think I'm going to dance. <laughs> and he jumped onto the dance floor, and it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. That's like out of a Prince video for a song. And I just like, thought, oh, my God, I've messed that up so bad. He's never, ever going to want to talk to me ever again. And then the night after, my mum and dad arrived, and we went to the same club, and my, I'm sitting with my mum, and I said, oh, I met Prince last night, and I've slapped him across the face. I feel so <laughs> terrible. And, um, and so Prince gets onto the dance floor, and he's got, like, all these bodyguards around him, eight feet tall bodyguards, so they're all holding hands. So there's a space underneath all of their arms, so they're forming a circle around Prince. My mum was five foot tall, and she just slipped under their arms, made a beeline for Prince. And she walked up to him and she said, oh, hello, Prince, I'm Lisa's mum. And she got hold of his hand and she went, oh, haven't you got small hands like a little boy? No, come on, she and said she that. she just shook his hand and said, see you later. 
And I just thought, oh my God, that poor man must think, I never want to see the Stansfield family ever again. Right. He gets slapped and then he but gets... I, he, ba- did t- yeah. I, he did talk to me again and he was very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably respected your toughness, your, you well, know, or whatever it was. Nerves. That yeah. was me being nervous and right. pathetic. It's Lisa Stansfield with us telling amazing stories. Uh, her new album is Deeper. Everyone should go out and buy it. And she's going to be on tour. She's coming to the Highline Ballroom here in the city October 14th. Uh, on tour now, all the tour dates. And to buy tickets, lisa-stansfield.com. Um, you have been getting rave reviews for this album. Um, mm. I read this new album sort of, it sort of feels like the grown-up Lisa Stansfield looking back at the, that era that we were talking about yeah, at the beginning it, of the interview? It's funny because the the way that, that I've been describing it is the best way that I can describe it is that this album is like the offspring of the first two albums. Ah, right. And so it's sort of got the same, it comes from the same gene pool, but it's slightly different and it's of, the, of its time, but it's, but it's, Got its parents' genes. Yeah, and it yeah. sounds really fresh. The songs are great. Oh, you, in fact, you, you already have a what is it, a top ten hit with the song "Never Ever," right? Yeah, it's great. That's yeah. fantastic. I'm going to hold this album up again because this is really beautiful. <laughs> and this photo starts the video of yeah. "Never Ever." So we've not actually finished the video. We're going to finish the video today. Right. Yeah. But the first shot is. It's yeah. fantastic. Lisa, it's so good to like catch up with you again. You and too. I can't believe that about Arista. I know. And I was talking about Melanie's office and that it was like the most brilliant office that I'd ever seen. Yes, right there. You like walk down, office. take a left, right in there. Yeah. And she had all little knickknacks and yeah, she was brilliant. Well, I'm sure she will be seeing you uh, October yeah, 14th no at doubt. the Highline I hope Ballroom. So, yeah. so best of luck. Stay safe on the road. Yeah. And uh, we'll you. see you back here in New York City in October. She is. Thank you, Lisa. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.